Ireland. This is Galway's City Shop Street. And it's quite sunny and it's very, very busy. <laughs> I think it's a bank holiday. And uh, yeah, very colorful, lots of tourists, of course. And I know that there are some people out here who are putting up tables for all kinds of things, for not just selling stuff, but for political reasons. We just had the big uh, referendum about abortion. Uh, but it looks like today it's just uh, back to normal, really. Although I'm expecting to see Atheist Ireland out, out here at some point. But uh, there are also some uh, Christian proselytizers as well. So it's not just in my town in England. Okay, Kelvin O'Connor, thank you so much for talking to us, and uh, you're here with Atheist Ireland in Shop Street in Galway. So how long have you been doing this, setting this table up? We've been setting up this table uh, as often as we can on a kind of a monthly basis uh, for the past three, three and a half years now. Wow. Uh, we don't quite get to do it every month for various reasons. <laughs> Christmas is always difficult in that, but in general we'll, we'll do it maybe nine or ten times a year anyway. You yeah. know? So a day like today is really good because there's a, a pretty big turnout of people yes. of all persuasions. The weather is unusually okay. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, it's not pouring with rain, so that's something. Yeah. So what, what is the general consensus you get of people who walk by? Like, for instance, when you first set up the table, it says Atheist Ireland. Yes. What sort of, did you get odd looks? Did you get people of a religious persuasion sort of having a go? Or? Yeah, part, part of the fun of the table actually is uh, is trying to read the faces and, and try to understand what people are communicating when they, when they don't come up to the table. So yeah, we get lots of... Uh, uh, curious looks, strange looks, amused looks. Yeah. Uh, I think you see the, the whole gamut of uh, of reactions, you know. Um, but in general, I have to say the people that actually come up to the table and express something is, in the majority, it's, it's quite positive. It is you quite know? positive. Yeah, people are quite happy to see us here, or at the very least, they, they respect that we're, we're coming out here and, and just saying, look, we're atheists. It's yeah. fine to be an atheist. We're here in Ireland. You know, Ireland has a, a strong reputation as, as, as a Catholic country and a deeply conservative, conservative one. Yeah. And we're kind of here going, no, oh, that's, that's not the case for all of us, you know. But you couldn't have done this, say, 30 years ago. Uh, or could you? Well, no, certainly not me, because I was five years old. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. And it's important to remember there's still lots of countries all over the world where yeah, you most certainly cannot do this. And occasionally yeah. we have people from uh, Middle East countries who tell us uh, you'd be killed in my country for doing this, you know. Yeah. Uh, and there are certain laws that we campaign to get changed that uh, are very relevant to that sentiment, um, particularly the, the blasphemy law that we still have in this country. That's, that's one of the things we're campaign campaigning for. And since the repeal of the 8th has, has come through now, I think we'll start to focus more on on the likes of the blasphemy law, um, which is actually used as an example uh, in other countries as um, a modern blasphemy law that has been passed in a Western country. Yeah. Um, we don't uh, prosecute based on it, but um, it does have a chilling effect here. But in countries like Pakistan, uh, they're executing people for, for, for breach of the same law, you know? Mm. Uh, so it's important that we don't have that here, that we're not even remotely yeah justifying what goes on there in, in, in Pakistan and countries like that, you know. Your table looks like it is a uh, Christian table. It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so have you been a Christi uh, Christian all your life? Or? I've been a Christian for about 19 years. And I'm uh, here to tell people about Jesus Christ because he changed my life 19 years ago when uh, my life was a mess and ruined with alcohol. So now uh, uh, he set me free from that. What do you think about the way that things are changing in this country? What with young people? We've oh, just yeah. had the referendum, and it looks like That's it's right. going to be on the yes side, uh, yeah. the pro-choice side. Yes. And we had uh, the gay marriage right. um, a while back, 2015. Yeah. So. 
What do, what do you feel about what's happening in this country? I feel it is quite sad in a way because it is going against the, the morals of, of uh, the Bible and what God says, what we will live. Um, but it does also say too, you know, these things are to be expected because it says in the last days, I know Jesus is going to come back soon, mm -hmm. and in the last days, perilous times will come and people will start to get away from God yeah. and to do their own thing. And, and I believe, you know, even with the abortion issue too, it is a sensitive issue with some certain with people. But uh, to me, it is uh, life is precious in the womb as well as outside the womb. And we just have to protect it as well, uh, inside the womb as well. But uh, and then with the, the same sex marriage as too, it's all sort of going against what God says. It's not what I have said, it's what the Bible teaches. Um, what, what do you say to people who say, oh yes, but the Bible also seems to condone slavery, for instance. Oh yes. And human beings got rid of that, uh -huh. campaigned yes. to get rid of that. Some use the Bible to justify it, and others used it to say, this is wrong, this is immoral. Yeah. But well, there's nothing really in the Bible that says, don't keep another person as property. No way, as a slave. I know it does say in the Bible about slavery, and there is things in the... In the at that time, you see, you have to think about this different the culture of them. Everybody is equal in God's eyes. We can't put anybody down, no matter does, what. It, God does skin. say that the, the, the slave, the servant, is your property. You oh can, yeah, you well, can beat him. Well, it doesn't say you can beat him now. I, I, I think it does in Leviticus. Well, uh, that's in Leviticus, but it does say about. In Leviticus, a lot of laws you see was in that time. It does uh, 600 and I think it's 613 laws, but a lot of them laws too was in the Old Testament. Was at that time for the uh, Jewish people, the Judaism mm -hmm. as well, because they still keep to them laws in these days as well. But then it was before Christ came into the world as well, before grace. There was a lot of works. Yeah. People sacrificed animals as well. But Jesus to came to uphold the law, didn't he? He did. He didn't come to. He didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law yeah. as well. Love covers all the commandments that he gave us in the old law. So, so the old law in the Old Testament says if your child is disobedient, you should take him to the town center and stone him. That is no longer applicable. That's no longer no, applicable. No, no, because if everybody... But God did condone that at one time. Oh, well, it was condoned at that time. There's different cultures, you see, in that time. And now, uh -huh. the things, of, things have changed, you know. If everybody that committed adultery in these days got stoned, like yeah. nobody left in the world, you know. But well, that's just what that people like me don't understand is why he would condone yeah. slavery well, condone, and that sort of thing condone, at one before, time. Before Jesus, I was, I was way back, before Christ actually came into the world, it yeah. never happened. It didn't mention Jesus when he lived in the world. He never mentioned much about slavery or anything like that. Uh, you know, it was done probably because he didn't agree with Mosaic, the old law. Mosaic, Mosaic, Mosaic law before it was before grace. You see, but there's a lot of uh, laws back then. It was meant for that purpose. Like you could say, there's so many, so much killings as well in yeah. the Bible. So many wars and battles. There was, there was, history. there was what you could call genocide oh, in the Bible oh, as well. Wars, indeed. I, I can't, I can't disagree with that because. Uh, these damn things happen for purpose because if you go go against God's law, you know God is always meant to be Does that whenever enough, you think of that, like, of like the story of the Amalekites, yes. that used to bother me as a it child. Because God basically said, "Go in and kill everyone, and kill did, the children, did, kill, did, kill the animals." Yeah. But but do you, what What do you think? I mean, I, I, I sort know, of like no, I find that really difficult. At that time, that it was great. It was horrible. We call them the horrible histories, you know, of yeah. of uh, the Bible, mm -hmm. but God. Allowed it. See, he allows a lot of things in this world. He could stop all these genocides too now. Yeah. He could if he wanted to. But these things are meant for purpose. We don't see the whole picture, but God sees the whole picture. And sometimes he uses these atrocities for some good might come out of them, you know. Just like the, the Holocaust too. I believe when the Jews were so, so much persecuted in the war. And the firstborn children the, being killed and got, all that. Uh, that but happened in Exodus. They got, it doesn't That's, seem like uh, any good could come out of that. No, well, you see, the la you talk about the Moses leading the firstborn out of the yeah yeah. Well, you see, the, the children of Israel, they came out of slavery. And that's, that's a good to come out of it because they got out of Egypt after that was done. Yeah. And see, God had to go to that extreme to, to soften people's hearts. He couldn't, have think, he couldn't have thought of something else. 
Well, he did. He done. He done ten. He named nine other plagues before that. He done that, <laughs> and then he, that was the last plague you see yeah. that he had done. That's the that's the worst one because yeah. there's only one that could soften Pharaoh's heart because it touched Pharaoh himself. Do you think that's why a lot of people are turning away from the Bible because of there's there's violence? God seems very angry. He seems jealous, which are, which are all very human uh, it's human frailties well, and emotions. You see, we are made in God's image. I suppose we have these uh, these emotions too. You know, jealousy and well, yeah. you see, God He created us, you know, in His image, and so He, he can do what He wants. But He well, in a way, I suppose. But he, he is a God of love, but also too, he is a God of that yeah. as well. And people forget that sometimes, you know, God does love the whole world and he, and he wants us all to have It's a bit like life. if we created little versions of ourselves, if we got fed up with yeah. them, we could just step on them uh, because no, we made them. No, he wouldn't be that well. That's kind of what's it's happening getting, in this world. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is, because this world is getting worse and worse. It does say, you look at the Bible and it prophesies yeah. about the last days, these things will happen. Was rumors of wars. People will be lovers of themselves. Uh, there's people always been like, wars. Yeah, yeah. And there's but nations, people are also getting kinder nations. and more humanitarian um, as well. Ah, uh, well. It's not like back Sometimes, in the. It's all about materialism. Thousands of years ago. No, money as well is the bottom. Love of money is the root of all evil, and I think a lot of these things is, is common, ha happening. And the root cause is, is down to greed and money. It is horrible yeah. at times, you know, some of the things that happen. But God allows it for a reason. I just had a walk around and I had a talk with one of your local proselytizers who was mm -hmm. telling us uh, about the love of Jesus. Do you get a lot of that in Ireland's shop street here in Galway? Uh, certainly that gentleman in question uh, seems to be here all the time, it feels like, you know. Um, but it's rare enough that I see anyone actually at his table, so I'm not really sure how much support he has behind him, you know. Yeah. Um, I know that for the little period of time that we do the table, we often get lots of support and lots of people telling us how great it is we're here and yeah. and and even the people the other people that maybe aren't so supportive uh, generally speaking they in the end they respect why we're here and, and what we're doing you know you don't have anyone shouting abuse at you or anything that sort of is pride in you. Uh, very rarely yeah. very rarely even to be fair even most people who uh, who would strongly disagree with us are usually relatively polite in how they express that yeah. you know uh, and in fact a lot of people that actually would be abusive tend to just be just fly past and shout yeah. something at us and, and keep going is but that from <laughs> Irish people or because you get a lot of people from different countries who are a tourist here is that all across the board do you think? I think it's all across the board I wouldn't like to say it's one particular yeah. uh, nation or another so uh, perhaps things are changing it's indicative of perhaps there, a dialogue is, is starting to happen between belief Absol and belief for, for sure things are changing I mean we just spoke earlier of how you know the Eighth Amendment passed in 1983 by sort of two is to one and it has been repealed now at two to one so it's, it's literally turned on its head uh, and that's in 35 years so uh, it, it, it's, it's great progress you see it all the time and um, you know even with marriage equality in, in 2015 as well you know yes. um, for sure things are changing for the better all the time and we, we kind of feel like we're a small part of it here uh, on the street. Um, oh yeah, you're definitely doing people. your bit. Um, yeah. You had a lady from Alabama just come up to you, and that's like the buckle of the Bible belt almost, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So obviously, when she announced from, from there, I was a little bit wary. wasn't sure where it was going to go, uh, but we had a, we had a lovely chat. Um, I just explained a little bit about how. Um, while we are there to promote atheism, our actual primary focus is just a, a achieving um, a secular country, a secular state, um, and I explained a little bit about what that meant. And it turned out that um, even though she was from, as you said, the, the Bible Belt, and she was 74 years old, uh, she actually agreed that uh, organized religion in particular, although she believes in God herself, yeah. that organized religion uh, is, is a source of a lot of evil in the world. And uh, we had a lovely, friendly chat, and we shook hands at the end, and. You know, and, and that's what it's all about. You meet lovely, interesting people uh, who may indeed have different viewpoints, yeah. uh, but you still have a great chat with them, you know? And maybe uh, you open their eyes to, um, to some of the issues we have in this country that because she's not from here, she wasn't aware of, you know? Yeah. So um, how long has Atheist Ireland been uh, an organization? How long has it been around? What are your goals? And uh, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested? 
Sure, so um, this year we're actually celebrating our 10th anniversary. Yeah. Uh, st obviously started as a quite a small organization, but we, we've, we've grown and grown and uh, you know, now our, our chairperson and other members get to speak at uh, UN Human Rights Councils. Uh, we're regularly mentioned on uh, in, in dull speeches. Uh, we're, we're generally part of the discussion now, you know, and we're generally the, the go-to group for radio interviews and stuff discussing um, atheism and matters of, of, of religious interest, you know. And yeah, you uh, find them calling so you more and more? Uh, yeah, certainly in the last uh, five or six years in particular we yeah. it, and obviously it, it waxes and wanes depending on if there's uh, relevant topics to discuss or not you know yeah. but yeah yeah for sure yeah it's great okay. how can people get in touch with Atheist Ireland if they want to uh, find out more or even uh, uh, become part of it sure so uh, our website's easy to remember it's uh, atheist.ie and you, you'll also obviously find us on Facebook and on Twitter and essentially all the relevant details of all our policies and, and what we stand for are all on the website. Yeah, so anyone interested, you don't have to live in Ireland, do you? Absolutely not. No, no. You don't no. even have to be an atheist if you don't want to, I suppose. <laughs> you don't have to be an atheist, but it helps. <laughs> it does help. Yeah. Okay, Calvin O'Connor, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Pleasure talking to you. comes to the end of our little recording session here in Ireland. We've seen the referendum and the pro-choice has won out and I think progress has run out for this one very conservative country and it seems that progress is happening uh, lightning fast, perhaps too fast for some people. The next thing of course is the blasphemy law. If that gets changed that'll be progress indeed. So I think it's a case of coming back here one day and seeing how Ireland is getting on.